QBS Radio 97.5. Good morning, I'm Ben Maxwell. Very happy to be joined in the studio by Ambassador Shane Flanagan from the Embassy of Australia to Qatar. Sir, welcome to the program. Welcome to the radio station. It's a pleasure to meet you. Ben, it's so good to be here. Really enjoy listening to your show and uh, really excited to have this chance. So thank you. Oh, listen, I'm just going to start off right away saying I'm so excited for Australia Day tomorrow. It is going to be, um, I know from my experience, Australia Day uh, in my world, in my history, has been always just a really great time, a lot of great celebrations. Um, tell me, if people don't know what Australia Day is all about, can you give them the 411? Absolutely. I mean, it's a day we really celebrate Australia as a modern, diverse, inclusive uh, country. Uh, it's a day in which we really celebrate and recognise the three important strands of our national identity. Mm. And uh, so they're the, our Indigenous uh, heritage, uh, really our European settlement and our history, and, and that specifically uh, recognises the anniversary of the 26th of January, uh, as well as our post-war migrant story. And mm. uh, all of those three strands really come together. There are opportunities across communities in Australia where those things are really celebrated through uh, Indigenous um, smoking um, and other cultural events, uh, citizenship ceremonies for those um, new migrants to Australia who are becoming Australian citizens, uh, as well as uh, really informal ways that people choose to celebrate that right. I'm sure you're familiar with, barbecues, <laughs> picnics, yes. the beaches, all of those sorts of things. And of course, it takes place towards the end of the Australian uh, school, summer holidays, and so it's a great time for, for people to gather with their friends and family. So it's akin to the U.S. Independence Day, July 4th, akin to Qatar National Day. So it, it's all wrapped up in that kind of vibe. It's a celebratory, celebratory kind of environment, yeah? Very much so, and uh, yeah, we're you know we're really looking forward to uh, to celebrating the day here as well. Which brings me to this: How does an Australian celebrate Australia Day in Qatar? What is what is the embassy doing? What's the outreach there? Well, I've got a really exciting day planned, so I'm going to be gathering with uh, with members of the Australian community this morning. We'll be. Um, uh, visiting a, an Australian nursery school, okay. and uh, that's a that's a nursery school that provides an Australian curriculum, uh, early childhood education, and I'll be reading some Australian stories to the uh, to the children there, uh, meeting the the parents, and uh, really looking forward to uh, to that. Uh, and then, of course, for Australia Day itself, uh, we'll be meeting with the the wonderful Australia New Zealander in Qatar group, uh, and that will be a, a, an informal celebration at the B12. Uh, club so we're looking forward to it. Are you going to be sharing one of my favorite Aussie treats, the Anzac cookies, the Anzac <laughs> biscuits? Uh, I think there'll be a lot of um, <laughs> uh, tunes getting played right. and uh, a lot of uh, snacks there and uh, people really relaxing. So it's going to be beach. like uh, Men at Work, uh, Midnight Oil, <laughs> Kylie, Natalie and Brulia, that kind of vibe, right? Yes, very okay. much so. We've, <laughs> you may be aware that uh, our Prime Minister is uh, sometimes goes by the uh, name DJ Elbow, and uh, <laughs> he's quite fond of playing a few uh, a few tunes. And, I didn't uh, know. I did not know that. So uh, yeah, I've uh, Australian music. We're very proud of it. Uh, he certainly loves it, and uh, yeah, we'll, we hope that there'll be lots of that played on uh, Australia Day. And we can't leave out ACDC in that conversation. Just want to just want to give that the propers. Let's move to football because. Uh, Australia is now qualified for the round of 16 in the AFC Asian Cup Qatar 2023. They were group winners. What's the vibe? How do you feel about that? Wonderful. I mean, they've played some some tough opponents and they had some great games. So played uh, India, uh, Syria, and also uh, against uh, Uzbekistan. So they've been really challenged. They've come out on top of the pool. I think the vibe around the camp is uh, is really good. They're very much looking forward to it. They love playing in Qatar. They right. have a lot of history here. Uh, and uh, so they're looking forward to the next phase, the sudden death phase. And um, yeah, they're getting towards the uh, the pointier end of the uh, of the tournament, and it's a very important one to them. So uh, I'm, I'm I have a very soft spot in my heart for the Socceroos. What's your opinion on the uh, overall tournament and its uh, organization? Well, it's wonderful. I, I unfortunately was not here during the uh, the World Cup, but um, stadiums are immaculate. Mm -hmm. The uh, I catch the metro uh, to um, to some of the matches. The connectivity is fantastic. Uh, all of the viewing from uh, from everywhere and all of the um, the way in which it's been kind of coordinated and organised is just first class as you would expect. So I think right. um, you know it's a wonderful tournament. Socceroos really love to uh, to come here. 
I think it offers a really unique experience as well because it's all right here in Doha. It is great, isn't it? Fans, it's so good for the fans. Qatar is doing such an amazing job of getting this kind of stuff done and like a well-oiled machine. What is your take on that? I think it's a great platform to uh, promote the country. I mean, I think it really raises awareness. I mean, like Qataris, Australians are mad about sports. Yeah. And uh, so you can be sure that every uh, night uh, the Australians are really tuning in to watch uh, those matches involving the Socceroos. There are many Australians uh, who have a background from other countries also represented in the tournament, so they'll be tuning into those matches as well. Right. Uh, of course, we've got the uh, World Aquatics Championships coming up. Mm -hmm. Australia, you know, it's a it's a powerful um, swimming uh, nation. We'll have a big team, so it's great uh, great platform to promote awareness, I think, and really uh, promote Qatar as a uh, uh, as a destination and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think as long as those events are uh, happening in such a successful way, uh, that's only going to continue. So Let's talk for a second about the Australian community here in Qatar. It's growing. It is. We've got a wonderful community here, very proud of them, and uh, many um, prominent members uh, making contributions in various various fields. So um, it's, it's excellent to see, and uh, well coordinated by the Australia New Zealand uh, in Qatar mm -hmm. uh, group. Uh, and then uh, we've got prominent Australians, including uh, the Socceroos GOAT, I think you would say. Tim Cahill is Tim here Cahill, yeah. as technical director for the uh, Qatar football team. Uh, a number of engineering consultancy firms. Um, Servcorp, a wonderful Australian company. Um, so it's, it's wonderful to see Australians across the landscape here making contributions in, in business, in sports. Uh, and we really hope to sort of build on those links. Is the Australian embassy or the Australian government doing things to help educate the Australian public as to what's going on here and to check it out? Well, I think um, Qatar does a, an awful lot of that itself in terms yeah. of these wonderful sporting events that we've been um, talking about. And I think those linkages with the businesses certainly help to promote that kind of awareness. Yeah, we're really pleased whenever we see uh, Australian uh, businesses establish a presence here. I helped to open uh, the GHD advisory service at the end of last year. So that's another great sign of the way in which the, the presence has been growing. So, yeah, no, I think it's um, it's very helpful that uh, that sort of people-to-people -people linkages, the, the business-to-business linkages, and, and we sort of build on all of that. Let's look at it the other way for a second. Um, what would you say to those people planning to visit Australia in the next couple of months and next year or so? Well, I'd encourage all of your listeners to take the opportunity to, uh, to visit Australia. There's a wonderful um, uh, replica of the Sydney Opera House at the Lucille Boulevard, but um, go and see the real thing, I yeah. think. And, uh, you know, once in your life, I think, if you can uh, cuddle up to a koala or um, go and experience some of Australia's great uh, indigenous heritage, visit the beaches. There are so many things, I think, that appeal to people uh, in Qatar. There's vast open spaces. Um, desert uh, environment and uh, um, the Great Barrier Reef. There's plenty to see. I think it uh, really, um, for anybody's taste, I think it can be tailored to what you're really interested in. Right. Lots of reasons to go and visit. And uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't wait too long. Uh, I'd really encourage people to get out there and visit Australia. Ambassador Flanagan, thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. I might play a couple of more Australian artists uh, as you head back to work this morning. I can't help but be a huge ACDC fan, so uh, <laughs> I was glad to hear you mention that earlier. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time, Ben. I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, really, um, you know, shout out to all of the listeners and uh, encourage everybody to uh, take their chance and, and visit Australia sometime. Thank, Thank you, you, Ambassador.